This video is a bit different to my usual content, hope you don't mind. This isn't really about a specific card or some specific code, it is sort of like a time-lapse video of the creation of my car dashboard. Let me know if you like this format, and if you see anything that you wonder about, let me know. I'm starting with three tabs at the top. If you've followed my channel for a while, you've seen me make these kind of tabs before. Someone pointed out in the comments of that video that the tabs aren't local, and he is right. So I'm actually planning to do another video about some local tabs. I'm just refining and cleaning up the code. My initial idea was to have an image of the car at the top, then display important information on that image, like battery status, preheating timers, and so on. But I actually scrapped this idea altogether. But it's part of the process, so I'll keep it in the video. Underneath the image, I'm adding two sensor cards in a grid, one with EV battery status and one 12 volt battery status. I'm paying close attention to the 12 volt battery because I know using apps, preheating and so on can drain the battery. Here I'm just creating the conditional cards for the tabs. You should watch my other video if you want to learn about this. I've created three tabs, they're in Norwegian, but they are going to house sensor information, various controls and charging information. In the control tab I want to be able to start and stop heating and cooling and I want to be able to lock and unlock the car. I think the way I've designed this is kind of interesting and unique. I have the two buttons for cooling and heating below each other, and one big stop button next to them. The way I do this is by nesting two grid cards inside each other. The first grid has two columns, then I add a one column grid to the first cell. I use grids instead of vertical horizontal stacks because grids doesn't have margin in my theme settings. Very often when I'm designing cards, I use this grid.layoutit.com tool. It is really great for laying out elements and then generating the necessary code. Here you can see that I've added an boolean as an entity to the card. That way, I can toggle the boolean with tap action. I can then style the card based on the state of the boolean. The boolean could also trigger an automation to start the actual heating. I later change the boolean to a timer, but the idea is the same. Spin colon true is kinda neat. It makes the icon spin when the state is on. Next, I'm creating five buttons in a grid. With these buttons, I will be able to set the state of charge. These are pretty simple button cards with a tap action that calls a service. Then I'm using the state to show what SOC I currently have selected. Then I'm starting to work on the info tab. Here I would like to show various sensors. First I'm just adding my usual sensor cards with the EV range info and another card with the odometer status. I realized that the battery cards would look a lot nicer if I use the sensor cards with a progress bar that I've showed in one of my previous videos. So I'm just copying the code for that from one of my other dashboard sections and adjusting the entities. I should probably create a button card template for this card, but I haven't really found a nice way yet, because each card need individual code to work properly. Instead of having the current battery percentage tiny at the bottom, I moved it on top of the bar and made it bigger. This made it look a lot nicer, and suits my overall design better. Then I went back to the control tab, I added some headline dividers and created the same button layout for locking and unlocking the doors. It might not be very interesting to watch this again, so I'll speed this up a fair bit. I changed the SOC tab to be called charging, because it makes sense since I have more charging controls and sensors there. I have created an automation for controlling the charging speed, so I would like to add that as a toggle button to this section. I have created some toggle buttons in a different part of my dashboard that suits this perfectly. Let me know if you want a video about this card. I mainly use it to turn things on and off, like automations for example.
I have also created some template sensors that gives me the time it takes to charge from current battery level to SOC, and also roughly how much it will cost based on the current electricity price. Then I figured it would look nice to lay out these elements the same way I did with the climate control. I wanted to swap around the order, so that the big card is first. For some reason, I really struggled to get that working. I'm just using the template editor inside the developer tools to create the template. Then I add it to my configuration.yaml file once I have it working. This first template calculates the time it would take to charge up to my selected SOC. All I really have to do is take the SOC and subtract the current battery level. Then I can multiply that by the size of the battery, 72.6 in this case, divide it by 100 and again by 4.1. 4.1 is the charging speed I have set my charger to. That gives me the correct answer, but it's easier to format the time correctly if I convert the hours into seconds. That way I can format the number using the timestamp underscore custom function. The next template I create is similar, but instead of calculating time, it's calculating price. I calculate how many kilowatt hours I need to charge, then multiply that by the current electricity price. One drawback here is that it is using the current electricity price for the full duration of the charge. I would like to make it so that it takes the average price of the time it takes to charge, then multiplies that with the remaining kilowatt hours. Then I'm adding a few more sensor cards to the info tab. I'm just using the same templates as I've showed in a previous video. I also create a big info card with the weight and size of the car. In this card, I create eight custom fields to show weight, height, length, and width. It's probably not super important to have this available, but it might be handy to know once in a while. Since this card is outside the grid with the two other cards, I use a negative margin on the card styling to move it into position. The next card I want to create is an overview over how much I've driven each day. I first create a utility meter using the odometer that cycles each day. I go a bit back and forth here, but I use the great mini graph card to create this overview. The utility meter won't update straight away, so I have to wait a while to see the proper data. Then I'm just playing around with all the different settings and styling for mini graph card. I even mess around with card mod for a good while, only to realize there is a built-in function for exactly what I wanted to do. Next, I thought it would be cool if I could add a progress bar to the climate control. I always want to run this climate control for just 10 minutes. My first idea was to have this progress bar on top of the top image, but I think it makes more sense to have it in the card itself, and for it to only be displayed while the heating or cooling is happening. I have something like this for my washing machine, but that has a progress sensor and percentage. I am yet to figure out how to convert remaining time into percentage. So this card is still kind of unfinished. I figured it would be smart to create an actual timer that I could use. That way I could display a live countdown in the card. I could then also use this timer in the automation that starts the heating or cooling. The automation could then wait for the timer to reach zero and turn off the AC again. At first I couldn't figure out why the card wouldn't display the countdown, it was just showing text. But if I used the state object instead of my custom field, it would show it correctly. I'm probably showing this too fast for you to understand properly but I think it's better to show how to create this card in a separate video.
This video is more about the full layout of this dashboard rather than individual cards. And that's how my current car dashboard looks. I don't care about all the different stats and sensors, but I would like to have some important information available. I could probably build on this with location information, alerts, and so on. Anyway, I hope that this has been somewhat interesting to watch. When I create stuff in Home Assistant, I jump around a lot until I figure out how I like to have it. Trial and testing is also important. So after using this for a couple of weeks, I will probably change and alter it. Let me know what you think and tell me in the comments if there is anything in particular that you want a closer, more detailed video about. Until next time.